Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, Skip and Shannon are making picks for this weekend's biggest games, including the Giants-Eagles, Falcons-Lions, and Seahawks-Titans. Plus, after Thursday night's thriller against the Niners, are the Rams legit playoff contenders? And reaction to the news that Aaron Hernandez was found to have a severe form of CTE. We've got a packed show today. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. The Giants are looking for their first win of the season as they head to Philadelphia to face the Eagles on Sunday. The Giants' offense has been terrible with only 13 points in two games. Odell Beckham Jr. came back from an ankle sprain Monday night but had just four catches for 36 yards. Odell talked about getting more involved on Sunday. Let's take a listen. It's hard to get into the groove, you know, when you're in and out. Um, so I look to play a lot more this week, um, in, in my opinion. Odell, do you think you're healthy enough to be able to take over a game the way that you have in the past? Um, I mean, I, I told you, my mind my mind is on another level. I feel like I could take over a game at any time, no matter the ankle or anything like that. Uh, so it's just a matter of getting those opportunities and, and making the most of them. Um, and just playing as a team, we have to play better in each and every phase, defense, special teams, offense. Uh, we just got to do better. Shannon, you were a believer mm -hmm. in the Giants to start the season. Mm -hmm. So will they fall to 0-3 on Sunday? Yeah, Shannon, tell us. Skip, it's hard for me to believe this, that I'm about to say this because I did pick the Giants to win the NFC East. But they're going to fall to 0-3. They're falling 0-3. Then are you going to predict they're going to bounce back and no, win the No, we, we're talking about this game. Yeah. We're right. not talking about prognostication All moving right. forward. I've already made my prediction, yeah. and it is what it is. Okay. They're playing against a team that has four INTs and eight sacks in two games. And the one thing that the Giants can't do is that they can't protect Eli. They have no resemblance of a running game. So now they're one-dimensional. Fletcher Cox, Chris Long, Brandon Graham. Now they get to tee off. Mm. Now, Flowers thought he had his hand full with Ziggy Ansa. He about to really have his hands full. Skip, they need to get something defensively. They need to be able to push the ball down the field. Well, in order to push the ball down the field, that would, would require Eli to take five, seven steps drop. Seven mm -hmm. step drop. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have that kind of time. And looking at it, I think Brandon Marshall retired and just didn't tell the Giants. So hopefully he'll come out of retirement on, on Sunday Maybe. and he'll play better than what he's played in the first two games. Odell keeps saying, yeah, yeah, I can take the game over. I just need to get opportunities. But how can you give him opportunities, Skip, when Eli can't hold a ball for like two seconds? Before Wait, was, was Odell complaining that he's not getting enough snaps? No, no, he Skip, he said it's hard to find a rhythm when you're in and out of the ball game. Mm -hmm. I can take over the game. It's just a matter of me getting the opportunities. He says, if you give me opportunities to make my plays, I can make them and I can make good things happen. Um, the Giants' defense is they're what they are. Carson Wentz is playing better. Normally, as a rookie quarterback, the biggest jump is from year one to year two. Things start to slow down. You know what's expected of you. You know how teams want to attack you. You know how you want to attack them. Mm. Um, they need to run the ball more. You know, Doug Peterson said, well, we need to run the ball more. Hell, you calling the plays, Doug. You're the, not only the head coach, you're the offensive coordinator. If you need to run more plays, how about you call more runs? Mm. Simple. Mm. Skip, I just, don't, I just don't like what I'm seeing for the Giants. The offense seems lifeless. They see One touchdown, two field goals, in mm -hmm. eight quarters of football, mm. going back to last year, including the playoffs, eight straight games in which they have failed to reach 20 points. Skip, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. And I believe the Eagles being at home, first home game of the year, that place is going to be electric. They're going to be flying around. And I got them winning 23-17. 23-17. Boy, you're giving the Giants a lot of points, actually. 17. That's not 20. Huh? <laughs> By their standards of that, late, that's that's, that's like 42, a, huh? that's a bonanza, <laughs> right? Yep. So it sounds like you are completely off the New York Giants bandwagon to me, and it sounds like you're off the win the NFC East bandwagon, unless you're you're still leaning toward coming back from the 0 and 3 dead. The, the question was, will yes. Giants fall to 0 and 3? I'm asking a new question. No, no, no. you go ahead and make your point. I'm Skip. holding feet to fire right here, right now. <sighs> Here's my problem with picking this game. I don't like either option. Honestly, I'm caught between rock and hard place. I got to take the lesser of two evils. 
I have to take either an aging Eli or a yet-to-come-of-age Carson Wentz. And I'm sorry that leap into year two, I'm, I'm not seeing it yet. But maybe you are. Maybe we'll see it this time. But I'm doubting it. So the reason I'm not gung-ho with this pick, the reason I'm not having the courage of my convictions on this pick is because the Giants still have a good enough defense to beat Carson Wentz. And it scares me a little, but not a lot. The advantage that Carson Wentz is going to have in this game is it sounds like your man Jack Rabbit is going to be out yet again. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he's got an Odell-like bad ankle. Maybe he's playing hard to get, too. Maybe he wants more money. I don't know. They just gave him a boatload of money last year. It's a troubled football team, troubled locker room with a very weak head coach named Ben Muchadu about nothing. But (laughs) I'm going to get to him in just a second. So... I'm, I'm leaning toward picking Carson Wentz, and then I read this quote yesterday from Damon, as you call him, Snacks Harrison, if I can open it here, about Carson Wentz. He says, at times, says Snacks, he looks like Aaron Rodgers out there running around, evading the rush, and still making some pretty good throws. He looks a whole lot more confident in the pocket. Mm-hmm. Hmm, interesting. Well, I will give Damon this. Carson Wentz is six feet, five inches tall and 237 pounds, and he is a, he's an athlete, man. He can escape. He can get out and run. In fact, guess what? Speaking of Doug Peterson, guess who leads the Eagles in rushing through two games is the big boy, Carson Wentz. Yeah. Mostly on scrambles. I don't think they're calling a whole lot of runs for him, but he still leads the league, I mean, the, uh, the team in rushing with 61 yards on eight tries. So... I will give you that every once in a while he does get out and run and escape and and every once in a while he rolls to his right or his left and he waits and he waits and then he flings it upfield because he's got a big cannon of an arm and Aguilar gets behind somebody for a touchdown. So I will give you all that. But too many other times I see him look like Blake Bortles. And I'm going to say it again. He had a QBR did Carson Wentz last year of 49 for the whole year, which is a notch below average because it's a scale of 0 to 100. And in his first two games this year, Carson Wentz has been 48 and 48. So they won a game at Washington, and he had a 48. And they gave Doug Peterson a Gatorade bath because that was such a big deal to the Eagles. That's what you're dealing with here. That's why it's hard for me to even pick the Eagles in this game. You gave your coach a Gatorade shower over game one against the Kirk Cousins in Washington? Seriously? And now I'm forced to pick between the rock and the hard place here. They've done something uh, your Cowboys hadn't done. They won a road game. Yeah. Well, my Cowboys won a whole lot of road games last year. Hey, that, we, we're talking about this year. Yeah. So the point is that Dak Prescott had a 79 QBR last year and Carson Wentz had a 49. What and did he have yet, on Sunday? Hmm? What did Dak have on Sunday? He had 35, but oh. he had 70 against the Giants in week number one, which is pretty great. So if you actually. combine those two, you, what, yeah. what, what, are we, what are we looking at? Yeah, wait until he gets a hold of that Arizona Cardinal defense, and we'll see what we'll talk about You hear about that, Pat that. Peterson? Yeah, yeah. And yet we have heard Doug, Doug Peterson talk about Carson Wentz being a combination of Peyton Manning and Brett Favre. <laughs> so. Why does that still gonna, annoy you? Huh? Why does that still annoy you? Because he he's year. so overhyped, Carson Wentz. He's not all that. I got to see it to believe it. And the, his, his signature game, and the reason I'm going to lean and pick the Eagles at home came late last year. You remember the game because it was on Thursday night football. It was December 22nd. And the Giants had just come off beating my Cowboys and the Detroit Lions, two teams on their way to the playoffs. Right. So we thought the Giants were pretty much on a roll. And they went to Philadelphia on that fateful 30, Thursday night, and they lost 24-19 to to Carson Wentz, who had his best QBR of the year, um, let's see, what was it? He was like a 70. I'll, I'll find it in just a second. But he played very well in that game, yet his stats were, were pedestrian. And, and Odell Beckham in that game caught 11 balls for 150 yards, and they still only scored 19 points. Why is that? Because they went one for five in the red zone. Why was that? Eli just didn't make any plays, and Odell doesn't have huge impact. He says he can do his Jedi mind tricks and just take games over. I think he thinks he could do it while standing on the sideline. He can just kind of take the whole yeah. game over. But, but he doesn't take games over because, as you just pointed out, even with Odell for the seven of those last eight games, right. 
they still haven't scored more than 19 points. What does that tell you about how valuable Odell is? Well, Skip, here's the thing. The thing is also you have to look at is that you need to run the ball also. See, people think you get into the red zone, it automatically means you throw the football. Yep. If you remember, you know, C.J. Anderson took a toss, yep. went to the house on the Cowboys. He did. Sometimes you got LeGarrette Blunt. Yep. What did you sign LeGarrette Blunt for? He is a running back. He is a, a, a power running back. Let him run the football. You're trying to run Smallwood. Mm -hmm. You're trying to run a, a Sproles. Skip, those are great change of pace guys. Mm -hmm. But 5'5", five, five, 170 pounds, that's not an every down guy. That's a, 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 a scat back. That's a third, in, a third and shorter. You want to swing it to him out of the backfield. I get it. But you got 240 pounds. Turn around and hand him the football and take some of the pressure off of Wentz. You can't at look. Mm -hmm. I get it. You've gone out there on the limb. You got Brett Favre. You say a little bit of Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. Got this, got some, some gumption of uh, Jim Kelly. I get and, all and that. And Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. He, he reminds snacks of Aaron Rodgers. So we got it all going on, man. Hall of Fame bound. Got to see it. No, I don't know about all that Aaron okay. Rodgers. Okay, so, so back to that. <laughs> his signature win was on that Thursday night. 24 to 19, and here are his numbers. In that game, he went 13 to 24 for 152 yards. That's 54% completion rate. One touchdown, one interception. QBR of 73, which seems high to me for those pedestrian numbers. Right. But Darren Sproles got loose for a 25-yard TD early. Then he got loose and escaped the rush and, and threw a, um, a big 40-yarder to Aguilar. And then Malcolm Jenkins picked off Eli, picked Sixton went 34 yards, and they were ahead 21-6 to six and hung on to win 24-19. to 19. So that's it for Carson Wentz, and that's the best of last year's Eagles was right there. So I'm going to guess that this game has that kind of potential because I'm going to guess that Odell is still a troubled center of that locker room because I didn't like what I heard from him in those that sound we just heard. What did he say? He, he also said we didn't see it there on, on TV, but – he said that he doubts he'll be 100% at any point this year. Are you kidding me? No, So you not. would say that publicly? It's not. It's what kind of message does that send to your teammates? It doesn't matter what he says. I know. I told you. If you limp into the season, you're going to limp out. Mm -hmm. when, does a, when does a doctor tell you, okay, yeah, you know what? You're going to get healthy, but you need to play pro football to do it. If you're hurt coming into the season, how do you recuperate when you got to go out there and bang on Sunday or Monday mm -hmm. for the next 16 straight weeks? That's not going to happen. So if you're hurt coming into the season, how do you think you're going to leave the season? Or when do you get a chance to get healthy during the season? Because guess what? They're going to be tackling him. They're going to be falling on him. He's going to be planting on that ankle. He's going to be mm -hmm. cutting on that ankle. So whether he said it or not, I know it. Mm. And you got on Eagles pocket square anyway. I knew you was going to pick the Eagles. Look at your mm. pocket square. I hate the Eagles. No, you don't, don't worry about it. You I got on Eagles pocket square. So I think that Odell is the center of the Giants universe and that Odell is the center of his own universe. And I think that Odell, there, there's something wrong in his, his mind tricks right now, that, that he thinks he should be the highest paid player in pro football. And I still believe that half of the issue is mental more than physical. So I'm going to say the Giants are in big trouble. Obviously, they can't protect Eli. And if Odell is playing half-heartedly because he's not sure about he his He ain't playing half-heartedly. Yeah, I think he is. I, I saw half-hearted in the first – he didn't play the first game, but the first game that he played. I, I didn't see Odell. I didn't see him giving all he got. Now, I still can't believe he didn't try to play against the Cowboys. That's just me. Well, that's well, the coaching staff and the doctors recommended that it be best if he didn't play the first game, mm. give himself an extra week to heal. How do you know that for sure? Well, how do you know? How do you know they didn't say that? Well, how do you know that they did? Because I, I, I think Odell just said. I feel comfortable. Saying I just that. don't think I want to go. Ben McAdoo said it. He may have. And speaking of Coach Muchadu, McAdoo. He, this week he said that he's thinking about. He he actually acknowledged he's thinking about giving up the Cheesecake Factory menu and the play calling. That he might hand off play calling. Now I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What if it's not the play calling, but it's the plays? <sighs> Could be, but now you have a coach who, after two games, has admitted that he's overmatched. That was a big concession and, and confession on his part. Well, Jason Garrett don't call no plays. So? So why is he's not overmatched? You, you criticized him yesterday about all he does is clap. Well, he did. I'm waiting until we get to the next block, and I'm going to do some more criticizing of Coach Clap, because that's all he does is clap. Until he 
decides to blast and throw Stop under the it. bus Ezekiel We're talk, Elliott. First of all, look at Carson Wentz. He was 6-2 at home last year. Mm -hmm. I believe he's shown improvements to me. Of course. Has he? Skip, he could have thrown for 400 yards, four touchdowns in each game, and the first thing you would have hollered, they didn't play anybody. Mm -hmm. Who are they playing against? He's not that good. He's not as good as Dak, although he has 800 yards and eight touchdowns. Mm -hmm. You're going to find a, a reason to dismiss everybody in that division that's not the Cowboys. Mm. Your day of reckoning. Unless they proved me wrong, and nobody's proved me wrong yet. Well, I did mm. last week, last Sunday. I proved you wrong. Well, that, did that was that an NFC East See, battle? No, no, you no. just said the division. So, so let me ask you a question. So, are they only supposed to win division games, or are they supposed to win well, all the we games? We were just talking about the NFC no, East. No, that's the statement no, you just made. All I said, you will find reason to criticize anybody in the mm. NFC East not name the Cowboys for whatever reason, whether they're playing within the division or not. You just think that this, that I, Dak Prescott told you it's, hung the moon. He it's, did It's three flawed division rivals. Four. Did, did I not compliment the Denver Broncos all last week? No. Nope. Did I not say, nope. I, I was saying, boy, I'm dreading this one. We I'm dreading want, this we one. We don't want your compliment. Yeah, well, I, you got him. If you stop thinking that Dak Prescott mm -hmm. hung the moon, he didn't. He doesn't, the sun doesn't rise and set in Dak Prescott. It doesn't. You know what? Last year he hung the moon not, and the sun. We're not talking about last year. Oh. Last well, year. How about is, first game this year? Last mm. year is history. Oh, okay. Tomorrow is a mystery. Who had a better year? Let's deal with today. Yeah. Tomorrow is not a mystery. <laughs> yes, it is. Years. No, it's not. So, because I think Vanderbilt's going to beat Alabama. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. We'll that's why that that's not a mystery. First, Skip, mm -hmm. look. You have to admit, now, is he Peyton Manning? Is he Brett Favre yet? No, he might not ever. Look, when you say somebody's going to be Peyton Manning, do people realize that Peyton Manning has five MVPs, Skip, that he has the most touchdown passes, <clears throat> passing yards, and I think uh, Tom Brady mm -hmm. just, uh, Drew Brees passed him as far as 300-yard game. Mm -hmm. Do they realize what Peyton Manning accomplished in the Don't ask me, ask Doug Peterson. I mean, does he, does he realize what Brett Favre did? Brett Favre was him. He was his backup, so. Well, clearly, yeah. he, clearly he has a flawed perception of what Brett Favre is, or he has lofty, lofty, lofty mm -hmm. expectations mm -hmm. of what he thinks Carson, uh, Carson Wentz can mm -hmm. be. But that aside, I see improvement mm. from last year to this year. Really? Yes. Did you watch the Chiefs game? Oh, oh, I watched the through? Chiefs game. I watched how they made Tom Brady look. Did you watch that game? Huh. Oh, I watched how they made Tom Brady look in his building. Oh. They came and messed up his house, rearranged his furniture. Huh. No feng sway was going on today. Maybe he didn't eat enough avocado ice cream. Maybe he didn't sleep in the pajamas that you sent him. Hmm. Maybe. I sent him pajamas? Yeah, those pajamas that you be wearing right here thinking you're going to be He-Man or something. I, I bought the pajamas. What about that mat? Maybe he didn't sleep on the mattress. Maybe hmm. he ate too many cookies. Maybe. Whatever the case may be, yeah. Kansas City will make a lot of people look really bad we'll because they that. made the greatest quarterback in NFL history yeah. look foolish. Yeah. Did they or did they not? What happened last time New England played Kansas City in the playoffs? Help me out. God, why what, we got mattered? You skip Help me I, out. You going back? You going back like a year? Mm, I'm going like back year. two weeks. Mm, okay. What is it? So, bottom line to this game is that Eli's up against it. When you got Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham and Chris Long and Vinnie Curry and Michael Kendricks coming from one side and Jordan Hicks coming from the other and you got Malcolm Jenkins, they're pretty good. I don't think they're as good as the Giants defense at full strength. No. But they're too much for the Giants offense right here, right now. You just so, want Philly to win. You want them to bury the Giants. That's what you're afraid of. I know what you're trying to do, Skip. I'm not trying to do anything. I told you I'm having a hard time. I, I don't like either one of them. But I'm going to take the lesser of the two evils. I'm going to pick Carson Wentz to beat Eli Manning somehow, some way, 17 to 10. Very low scoring. Nope. Yeah. Nope. You're going to switch? Take the Giants. You no. want the Giants? No. You can have them. I don't want them. You had them all offseason. <laughs> I will have them at a later date and time. I'm just yeah. not picking them on Sunday. Okay. 0 and 3 to division champs. I know somebody in that division about to be 1 and 2. Really? I'll let you figure that out. Redskins? Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Want to put a case of do on that no, right no, now? No, we, Let's we, do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. We, we, I'm ready. We'll talk about that on Monday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But I feel very comfortable that something bad is going to happen. Ooh. No mercy. Ezekiel Elliott has been criticized all week for his lack of effort against the Broncos on Sunday. Jason Garrett said Zeke's play wasn't up to the Cowboys' standard. 
But Jerry Jones defended his running back. Dak and Zeke addressed the issue yesterday. Let's take a listen. I would say I was just very frustrated, but that's no excuse for the lack of effort I showed on tape, and I just can't do that. You know, being one of the leaders of this team and, you know, being a guy that people count on, I, I can't put that type of stuff on film. It's definitely not me. It's definitely not the type of player I am. It's definitely uh, not who I am for this team, and, uh, you know, I just can't do that. I was frustrated, and, uh, you know, I kind of, and I, and I wasn't myself. First, I really listen to outside criticism. Um, for me, I know that I know who he is. I know the type of football player he is. I know the type of guy he is, and I've never and never will question his competitiveness or um, his lack of effort or whatever you want to say. I'll never question that. I know he's going to be there for me, for this teammate, for his teammates, his organization. Uh, so I mean, I don't pay attention to what other people say. Eric Dickerson is still with us. Eric, do you like what Zeke said? I, I just got to look at him. I got to look at him first. <laughs> of course, I like what he said. You know, he's owning up to it, and he said. He was frustrated. He's one of the leaders on this football team. His quarterback came back and supported him, as he said, presidential-esque, mm -hmm. you know? I think that Zeke knows he didn't do the right thing. As a player, all of us have done things we're not proud of sometimes on the Absolutely. field. We've lied, we could call it lollygagging around, yep. you know, not giving 100%. But when it comes down to the real big picture, he's a pro football player. Mm -hmm. He loves the sport of football. He's going to play hard. And I'll give you my own story. We played the Packers in 1983, my rookie year. I was a rookie. We go down. We're going in to try to tie it. No, we're going in overtime. I take the hands off. I knock the ball out the quarterback's hand. <laughs> we lose the game. They go back, kick a field goal, no time left. I go in the locker room, frustrated, very frustrated. I say something dumb. I got to give my friend Jim Hill, Hill credit. He didn't reprint it. I said, he asked me, so, Eric, how do you feel about the game? You feel like you lost the game? I said, well, you know what? I'm going to get paid either way. But I do feel bad about it. Now, you don't say that. I'm going to get paid. I mean, because you said it on I said, camera. I said it. Because Jim Hill's. Right. TV I said it there. on camera. Yeah. They didn't put it out. I'm glad he didn't. But what it was, it was frustration. I cared about my football team, just like he's owning up to say, hey, I can't play like that. I can't have that on film. And right, you want to think about it? Film does not lie. It's going to show all the time <laughs> what you did right and what you did wrong. But I do like that he's owning up to it. That's all I'm saying, Skip. That's yeah, all that's I want to eat. All you're saying. That's all I want E.D. to do. Yeah. Just acknowledge it. Zeke acknowledged that on those two plays that he didn't give his best effort. And the one thing about I'll that, just I, say one play. That other play, he was on the ground. I mean, get look, up. Come on. Don't get, get up. It was, the guy was on top of him. That's your question. Did you, watch, did you watch film at home? Yes. Okay, why? You you required to watch film at work between nine to five to get because you know you want to be down to get better to get better to get better to get to get better exactly. <laughs> so what you try and do is that you try and stop negative behavior before it's being formed. So what we do is that we're going to correct this, Zeke. That's the kind of effort that effort that will get us beat. Richard Smith, who was my def was a uh, uh, my special teams coach earlier in my career, he said, "Son, that kind of effort will get you cut and me fired." Now, Zeke's not going to get cut because he's a special type of talent, but I just need to see that effort. I know he can do it. Mm -hmm. I know what Ezekiel Elliott is, uh, is, is capable of doing. I saw it over a 15-game stretch last year, and I saw it what first game of the season when he played the Giants and then he ran through them. But when he went to 5,280 feet a mile high, he had a dream. <laughs> a bad dream? He had a dream. The only person that could have made that dream come true in, in mile high mm -hmm. was Dr. King. That's the only man that a dream will come true for. But if you go there with a dream, Skip Bayless, mm. Dak Prescott had a dream. I'm going to impress Skip Bayless. No, you not. Hey, Skip, oh, let me see. Hold on. I'm, 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 he had a QBR. He had a, Q, he had a QBR of 36. Z, scale of 0 to 100, ED. If you got a, a QBR of 36, is that good? That's not good. That's 14 points below average. But, but, but now, now, look, you know this, too. Yeah. No one plays great all no, the time. No, no, no. No one plays great all the time. And, 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 and stop trying to find tape on me loafing. You, you know it. I'm, I'm looking for it. I already let you. But I'm Skip, looking for it. I'm glad. You know why his QBR was so low? He had two interceptions. Whose fault were those two interceptions, according to the Hall of Famer, Shannon? Dak Prescott, because he shouldn't have threw it to the no, guy. Stop. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but you know what, Skip? I'm glad Zeke owned up to it, and I'm glad Dak covered his back because in the, in the locker room, I mean, publicly, I would never criticize a player even though I know he was some bull jive. Mm -hmm. Now, I've told players mm -hmm. that they were bull jive, but during the camera, I'm like, hey, he played better, he'll get better, but after the camera gets grown up. You, you tell the truth. I know you. You don't, you don't say what you really feel. Hey. <sighs> this is 
all about you gloating <laughs> over your Broncos beating the snot out of my Cowboys last Sunday. That's all it is. And the more I think about this, the sicker I get because it's really about, to your point, one play. And it's a highly out of character, unusual play in so many ways, shapes, and forms because it's probably the first play in Zeke's pro career, maybe his pro and college career, in which he is running a downfield pass route. So he has run completely past the play. And I'm not going to defend this, hands on hips, because that's a bad look. And it got caught on film. It got caught on videotape. And in this world, videotape will, it, it's the ruination of every, if you got it on tape, you're dead, right? No, not, not, not always. Not necessarily. Uh, they can doctor uh, it. Yeah, no, we, no, we've seen things get caught on tape, and we know how that I ends up. I don't know. I don't know. Do we? So yeah. here's the point. He, he overruns the play because it's his pass route, and he turns and realizes his star receiver, who's also supposed to be a team leader, did this to catch the football. He, you know, like he that. did. He did. And it goes right through his hands and right to Chris Harris Jr., who's already breaking on the ball and has a head of steam to go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So all of a, we know Zeke had already hit the orange brick wall about five times, yep. and he's going nowhere fast. And he turns, and he's like, what else can go wrong? And should he have paid sort of lip service to it? Should he have gone through the motions of jogging after the play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's one highly unusual play because his reputation in that cowboy locker room is warrior. That's all. Practices as hard as anybody, plays as hard as anybody. Was he a repeat offender of taking plays off or jaking it or lollygagging? No, not once in his life has he ever been accused of any of this. And all of a sudden, your man LaDainian Tomlinson, your fellow Hall of Famer, on Sunday night condemns him as absolutely quitting on his team. He quit on his team because of that one play? And I, I asked LaDainian now, on the very last play of the game that Dak Prescott throws a pick six on, did, did it look like he quit when he threw a devastating block on the blitzing linebacker and cut him, took his feet right out from under him to the point that the linebacker winds up on top of him and Zeke's on his back on the ground? Is that quitting on your team? Not at all. I think that took some effort to make that block, well, right? Uh, we could give him that med alert. We could have gave Zeke that med alert. He yeah. pressed the button. I'm in my high, <laughs> and I can't get I'm up. I'm falling, I can't get up. <laughs> I skip. Let me, oh wait, let me ask you this yeah, question. Then. Yeah. So, do you think it would have been a better look if he didn't put his hands on his hip, he just turned and just looked? No, it would have been a better look if he had turned around and chased. I get it, he got a clear route. He's not, they, they're telling Zeke, we're not going to even throw you the ball. We just want you to clear it out. We're going to throw the slant in behind you. I get it, I've been there. And I've also the carom. But you got to turn around and give some have effort. Have you ever muffed a pass that badly that it went right through your hands, right to the DBs? I did. There you you did? Oh, I did? What? You admitted it? I did it. Actually, I did a play like that in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, after I sprayed, did you chase it? Yeah, I tried to get it. I, I, got, I got it. Did you get it? Oh, I was on one leg, but I got it. Okay, I, I tried to. Who I, was this? Ronnie against Bradford. Atlanta? Yeah, I guess Bradford, Ronnie Bradford. He was an ex teammate of mine, and he'd already been talking trash. So, too, you, so, so you wanted to go get him? Yeah. You just okay. completely muffed a John Elway pass? It was a stick. I ran a stick route, and I, I uh, my, uh, my left knee, it was my, my left knee. And I planted, whoo, that thing just like, ooh, Lord. Ooh, that thing, the pain just went through mm. me. It's just like, ooh. I wasn't even thinking about the ball. I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and next thing you know, Bradford had the ball. I had to get him no skill. You on got a, him even I, on one on leg? On a bad knee? Uh, yeah, on one leg. Okay. He, yeah. I mean, because he was right there. I mean, I just I just grabbed him and threw now, him down. Uh, what you say? He was where? Huh? He was right there. He was right there. Right there. See, he wasn't right there in that place. Oh, I, oh <laughs> if he'd have been webbed on one leg, I couldn't have caught him. <laughs> I might have, though. I don't know. I could have ran straight ahead, but it's mm. just that planting and cutting. But I go get him now, Skip. Oh, O'Shea go get him. I think get that's him. the first time you've admitted to making a mistake. No, no, no. I made, made I'm going to tell you. I'm going to find a play. I made ran the wrong route a I'm bunch of times. I'm going to find time. a play with you. Well, I didn't run the wrong route by accident. I did it on purpose because I wanted the ball. He, he's only admitting that's that team that player. Failure. Oh, yeah. You, you're you're only admitting that's to That's not it. a team player. I got it. What? Because he wants to make the point that everybody makes a mistake, but then you chase yeah! them hard. Oh, you see. don't exact. You yeah. don't exacerbate the mistake. But did you hear what you just said? What happened? I ran the wrong route on purpose because I wanted the ball. I did. See, that, that, that's not because right. That's not right. No, no, what, the film don't lie. Yeah, don't lie. <laughs> don't lie. The film don't lie. But if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Skip, I needed, a, I needed five yards for 1,000. I needed 121 yards for 1,000. 
I had 116 and two touchdowns at the half, and they didn't throw me another ball. So I just started lining up all over the field, wherever I thought the ball was going to go. How do you remember every little number? Because I was cooking the Raiders. <laughs> I cooked them so bad. You know what I did? I cooked the Raiders so bad, I made them go out and sign Albert Lewis. Ooh, go get Albert Lewis. Lewis. Because if you don't, you ain't got nobody on your team that can stop, slow me down. And I cooked him. And I run the wrong routes anyway, so I can get Stop it, it. I'm just saying. It happened. A couple of times. Okay, I mean, I, I, I'm with you. Albert Lewis is a cornerback. I, that's what he had to go get him to come see me. Because I was running through their corner. You're a tight end. I was running through them. You put a safety on you because you can't I wish, run. I wish they would have. You're a 4'8", 40 guy. I wish they would have. You know what, Skip? You were right. So, in 93, the last game of the season, I cooked them for like five for 116, 120, and two touchdowns, and then went back out the following week, hit them up for 13 for 156. Bust this is Albert Lewis, we need yeah, you. That's, the, uh, that's, that's, that's how you need you. That's how you remember them numbers, though. We, we need you, Albert, because we can't do nothing with you. You've got like a photographic, oh, I do. egomaniacal memory oh, yeah. of every little cowboy. Did you know that there's some. Uh, it's something out there. I'm going to find it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going totally to find it. No mercy. The Rams held on to beat the 49ers 41 to 39 on the road last night. Jared Goff threw three touchdown passes in the win, and the Rams are now two and one. And through three games, they've scored their most points since the 2000 Greatest Show on Turf team. We're joined once again by Rob Ryan, but first, Skip, mm -hmm. the Rams are in first place right now. Mm. Are they overrated or underrated? I think they are dangerously underrated because my Cowboys on a short week are now going to have to deal with Arizona on Monday night and then go home and face this. And this is becoming something. I didn't even intend to watch the game very closely last night, and all of a sudden, after a while, I could not take my eyes off what was happening to the L.A. Rams offense because it is coming together and taking off with talent everywhere I looked. And I told you last year, Shannon, that Jared Goff fell into a terrible situation with a head coach who's pretty tough on young quarterbacks, mm -hmm. and Jeff Fisher, and I felt like he was tearing down Jared Goff, criticizing him to the media, in part to buy a little more time for the head coach, Jeff Fisher, who hadn't won a playoff game since 2008. I'm sorry, he hadn't made the playoffs since 2008 and hadn't won a playoff game since 2003. And I wasn't sure how he kept his job up to that point, and he finally lost it and much to the benefit of Jared Goff because young Sean McVay has come in at age 31 and just changed Jared Goff's life. And they have playmakers now that they have Sammy Watkins around him that are, and, and all of a sudden, that running back started looking like that run. Oh, we, yeah, where did he go? Oh, well, he yeah. was back. Right. And in the third quarter, Jared Goff threw a ball to Sammy Watkins. If we could see this, th this is a thing of big-time beauty to me because – here it is. Tell me this doesn't look like the first pick in the draft. And what a catch yeah. that was by Sammy Watkins. Right. There is firepower. Tavon Austin, I saw a couple of flashes from him. I saw Todd Gurley for the first time in a long time. I, I look around, and th this team is loaded on both sides of the ball, and I do – I think you have respect for Wade Phillips. He's, he's going to bring that – I know they gave up a bunch of points to the 49ers, but still, I, I think – I think they're they're going to get way better faster than you think they are because they're just loaded with skill talent, and that guy in the middle of that defensive line is a big stud that you can build around. So, it is. yeah, go I, ahead. Yeah. I'm, for me, Skip, I, I can't overrate them off of last night because I know they're two and one, but they beat Scott Tolzien and Brian mm -hmm. Hoyer. Now that's not Tom Brady and that's not Aaron Rodgers. They gave up 39 points to a team that had yet to score a touchdown in their first two games. They gave up 240 yards rushing to a Washington team. So now you're going to – so I don't really who, – who are they? I thought they would be a lot better defensively. I, I mean, 39 points with that talent? You got Robert uh, Quinn first rounder. Yeah. Aaron Donald, who's mm -hmm. a top three defensive player. Yep. You got Ogletree. You got uh, Ogletree. Ogletree. You got Tremaine jo Yeah, I mean, Brockers. all of – I mean, they're Aaron. littered with first yep. round draft picks. Marcus Joyner. Watch, Jermaine it'll start Johnson. to come back together. Yeah. And, yep. and you gave up 39 points to a team that scored three points in one game and kicked four field goals in another. And I'm supposed to – to feel good about you up for the Okay, but Brian yeah. Hoyer had to deal with Seattle at Seattle. Now, I, now, no I will fun. say this, Skip. What does this say about Buffalo? Sammy Watkins oh, and Robert Woods gosh. both go over 100 yards, and Buffalo let both of them go. Marquise Goodwin, who was also in Buffalo, is playing well for San Francisco yeah. 49ers. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Maybe the talent that they got up there at the skill position is more than what we know, 
but it's hard for the, for me to believe well, this man. that they he got knows. three better they got right. three better receivers than those guys. Well, I, I'm glad you addressed that. <laughs> they, they were not good enough to play for Buffalo, but mm -hmm. both receivers there for the Rams got over 100 yards, and and I'm sure they got all the answers there in Buffalo. But um, <laughs> sure they do. But uh, the the one thing is with this Rams, uh, you know, great coaching tilts the field also. Besides just great players, and, yep. and uh, uh, unknown fact that Aaron Cromer is an offensive line coach. Uh, and offensive line coaches are at a premium now. People are getting killed out there in quarterback because nobody has time to protect, you know, practice and all that. So you need a great offensive line coach. Aaron Cromer's come in here. He's put in the running game, and he's a scheme run guy. Uh, he led the league for two years in a row uh, with Buffalo running scheme runs that holding the backside with the quarterback yep. because of Tyrod. Mm -hmm. Well, now you see the scheme yesterday was the fly sweep. And they and Hyvon Austin, they, they have to hold the backside, yep. or he's going to run for 50 yards. Right. So they hold the backside. Now Gurley's not taking the pounding, right. and he gets 113 yards rushing. So uh, the whole thing's working really well on offense. Wade Phillips, you mentioned he hasn't gone against Tom Brady, and and, and these the defense has got torched last last night. A team that hadn't scored. Uh, but you do have Wade Phillips, and you, you're going to go against Tom Brady. You're going to go against these guys. Wade's not going to flinch. He's got a lot of talent to work yes. with. He'll get these guys playing better, as you know. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the D-line has more, more talent on it. Uh, they lost Waffle, the great D-line coach, who gets him on the quarterback in two seconds or he, or he uh, you know, kills people. So, uh, you know, uh, they'll get that together. But, you know, I have faith in Wade. And I think, I think this young uh, uh, coach came in. Yes, the young Sean coach McVay. came in yeah, and, and hired an amazing staff. Yes. An amazing staff. And he's great for this young quarterback. So, uh, they're a team to watch. And I agree with you, Skip. I think they're going to do some things. Well, one of the big acquisitions, Skip, is that they got Andrew Whitworth. Oh, a huge Davis. acquisition. That's he, a huge They traded up. for Tomlinson, the, uh, the left guard for the Detroit Lions. Another great so pickup. They, so they've shorted their offensive line. But yep. I like Deshaun McVay. A lot of people think that when you get a, uh, a, a rookie a, a, a rookie quarterback and you draft him first overall, most teams, if you notice, they get defensive coaches. You look at Andrew Luck, Chuck Pagano. Look at Peyton Manning. He had Jim Morris. Mm -hmm. They get the uh, uh, Cam Newton, Ron Rivera. But, hey, if you got a quarterback and you're going to build around him, shouldn't you get somebody that know offense and that mm -hmm. can put him in the right kind of scheme to let him do what you took him for? Because if he's going to be the face of your franchise and if he's going to be the most important guy, you need somebody that can closely work with him and understand and can put him in situations where he can succeed. Mm -hmm. I understand, you know, defensive guys, you know, we're going to run the football, we're going to play great defense. But you, he looks night and day. I mean, oh, last year amazing. he looked totally incompetent. I, yeah. Now he looks like, okay, I can see why they took the guy with the number one overall pick. He got his confidence destroyed last year, and now it's being rebuilt by a guy who's not very much older than he is at yeah. age 31. Andre Whitworth is 37, so he's six years older than the head coach. So there's new energy and creativity. And I saw a team, just my eye test last night, that is is on the verge of being really good, of being a threat to Seattle. Maybe not the rest of this year, but there's so much firepower everywhere. Well, I want to put on the brakes now. I got to ease on the brakes. You know, I'm not going to step on the brakes. I'm going <laughs> to ease on the brakes so I don't, you know, wear them down. Did I mean, you pick the Giants? That was that was the 49ers win. At the beginning of the season. Yeah. Talking about mm. pumping the brakes. It's still, it's still the beginning of the season, Joy. You got the so, parking brake on. Yeah. You got to pull it off yeah. and get yeah. them going again. So all I know is that before the year started, I look at my Cowboy schedule and I go. Duh, 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 yeah, you said we. I get down just... to L.A. Rams. I go, well, that's the only one I thought all year. Well, that's a W. You know, that's an easy <laughs> one. And then you go. Now you have to play at Arizona on Monday night. And on a short week, you have to prepare for that team that has to be feeling a whole lot better about itself with nothing to lose and all that fire. There's studs all over that defense. I know yeah. it gave up 39, but watch what Wade does to it. He's, wanna, he knows what sure. he's doing. He'll get I want to see Aaron Donald and Zach Martin. I want to watch that. I, I'm, hey. yeah, all the outside stuff, but that, I want to see number 70 versus 99. I like 99. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he ended the game last night with a big sack on four Yeah. Games, so. hey, and, and look, he's just getting back into game shape. Yeah. Don't let him get back in all, all the way back. Skip. Hey. Man, Crocky, he's worth a lot of money. He needs to start backing that big old armored truck up to, his, to, to <laughs> Aaron Donald. Donald. Home. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was an exciting game last night. That was hey. the highest was scoring game in Thursday night football history. Whew. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be hard-pressed for somebody to score 80 points.
I'm going to start yep. watching Rams games. I think they're going to be fun to watch. No mercy. Sunday on Fox, the Lions host the Falcons in a matchup of undefeated teams. Matthew Stafford is tied for the NFL lead with six touchdown passes in two games, but Atlanta is a slight favorite on the road. Shannon, who wins? Skip, who is uh, Matthew Stafford tied with in touchdown passes? Oh, Trail. Oh, is he? Oh, Trail. Oh, Trev. He's oh, on yeah, his way to being all pro, right? Yeah, oh, Trev. Yeah. Hold it down, Trev. Hold that fort down. Okay. Skip, uh, I like what I've seen from the Falcons thus far. Um, they have shown zero ill effects for what transpired in the Super Bowl. And they could have thrown a pity party. Um, that's very difficult. I've been very fortunate, knock on wood. I didn't lose any of those. But I can just imagine being up by the largest margin and losing in the largest comeback in NFL history. That could have been tough. And they've shown no ill effects of that. Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, that offensive pick right up where they left off all those Kyle Shanahan is now head coach at the Seattle, not Seattle, San Francisco, and Steve Sarkeesian taking over the play calling duties. I like what I'm seeing defensively. They're a fast team. Dan Quinn, the head coach of the Falcons, built this team in the model of Seattle. He won't undersized, fast guy that can attack the quarterback and rally to the football. Their best pass rush is going to be out for about a month, uh, Big Beasley. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned about that. But what I've seen from the Falcons is that offense – they're playing, they're playing high speed. They're playing at a very fast level. I'm going to take them in a, in a, in a high-scoring shootout of the ball game. Mm. I'm going to go 35-31. Mm. Falcons in a close one, but the Falcons go to 3-0. and Lions wow. go 2-1. and one. I like how you worked in the fact that you never lost a Super Bowl, which was sort of a, a LeBron-style humble brag where you congratulate the Indians on winning 21 in a row, but you say, I, I once won 27. But no, Skip, right? but, I, but I'm it's just, okay. I'm, I like no, it. No, I'm trying to like imagine. I'm impressed. What, I'm trying to imagine mm, I know. what That's it would what it be is. like yeah. to lose the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But imagine losing the Super Bowl when you're up by 25. I know. No. Devastating. I, I agree, and I think they're, they still haven't felt all the effects of that, which is why I'm going to go way out to the end of the limb on this one, and I'm going to pick a big upset here because I think the Lions will get them at home in a shootout. I have kind of the same score you do except in reverse. I'm going 31-30 to 30 home team, okay. and I know it's indoors, and Atlanta plays really fast on the carpet. And the other thing that really scares me is Jared Davis, their 21st overall first-round pick of the yeah. Lions this year, who has just taken over their defense. He's become the quarterback of their defense mm -hmm. out of Florida. Yeah. He, thanks to Odell Beckham's cheap shot, because Odell pushed him in the back and pushed him into a collision yeah. in which he suffered a concussion, concussion, and he hasn't practiced. So I don't know. Maybe I should hinge my pick on whether he plays or not. I'm hoping he plays because it would be a big deal, especially against Matt Ryan. But Matt Stafford, the other Matt, he can operate. Yeah. I love to watch him operate his offense. And now that they're actually committing to run the ball a little bit with Amir Abdullah and Theo Reddick, and you, got, you don't have to throw it just to Megatron now. You can throw it to Golden Tate or Marvin Golden Jones. Jones. Yeah, and that the rookie they got. Yep. He, he's, he's pretty good. Yep. And, and Reddick can really catch it out of the backfield. And I like their defense. I, I think they're – Ziggy hey, you, 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 The Darius Reddick. Slay, Julio Jones hey. matchup. Hey, it will be something it, to watch. It's pretty good. So, again, will they be able to stop it? No, they won't. But I just think that something is going on with Detroit. I think they're at least going to be a threat to Aaron Rodgers and company, and it will start here when they go to 3-0. and But I need Jared Davis to play. Okay. Well, Lions have six sacks, four, three forced fumbles, and picked off four passes. And Ziggy Ansah had three sacks last week. I'll take that. Five against Eli Manning. So please. They but they're not playing yeah. the Giants. Mm. True. Next up, Sunday on Fox, the Titans host the Seahawks. The Seattle offense has been terrible so far this season with one touchdown in two games. Shannon, who wins? Uh, I'm going to take the Seahawks. You better because they're your pick to win the whole thing. Skip. Huh? I didn't say they're going to be 15 and 1 or 14 oh. and 2. I just said they're going to be the NFC. You said they're going to be 8 and 8 and win the Super Bowl. Right? Stop. Excuse me. <laughs> I believe the Seattle defense, Seattle's offense finally starts to get on track and so some resemblance of a, a mm. quality team. The thing is, is that Russell's going to have to do a better job of finding Jimmy Graham. Four catches for nine yards, Skip, is not going to cut nope. it. Nope. He's too good of a talent. He's too big of a target for him, and, and he's been there long enough now that he and Russell should be on the same page. The defense is going to be the defense. They will get out the Mariota. I believe they force a couple of turnovers, give their offense a short field, 
and they win a close ball game. I'm going to say 23-16, mm. but Seattle comes away from Nashville with a victory. Mm. And I say the team you picked to win it all is a teetering team. I say it's on the verge of internal combustion kind of trouble because that defense has got to be getting angrier and angrier at that offense because that offense scored nine points at Green Bay and then managed all of 12 points at home against the same 49ers defense that we just watched give up 41 last night in their place. Mm -hmm. 41 in their place, wait, and so Seattle scored only 12 against that defense mm -hmm. at home, and you're going to pick them at Tennessee? I just can't. You just picked the Rams as a playoff team, and they no. just gave up 39. I didn't say they were going to make the playoffs. I just said they're a team on the verge. On the and verge of what? On the verge of maybe upsetting my Cowboys. That's well, what I'm yeah, worried well, about. Well, but I need to see that. I, I, I'm with you on the Mariota factor. I, I don't love him. He is a mistake maker, and you're probably right. He may turn it over a couple times. But I do like Derrick Henry and DeMarco Murray just pounding away against your defensive front. And as much as I respect it rushing the passer, you can wear it down. It's, it's a little bit smallish and not as physical as Tennessee is mm -hmm. on defense. This is going to be old-fashioned, headbangers, ball kind of a football game. I, I got it really low scoring. I, I'm going to go absurdly low. I'm going to go 12 to 10 home team here because – I still like Tennessee's offense a little bit more than I like Seattle's offense. Seattle's offense. I just don't see it yet. And I, I think they're going to have problems. They're going to be finger pointing. And if they lose this game, trust me, there's going to have, be hell to pay inside that locker room. And Pete Carroll's going to have to earn his money to keep that team together. Well, the running back situation, this is what surprised me, is that they signed Eddie Lacy and they seem to be all gung-ho on him. But last week, he was a healthy strat, scratch. Mm -hmm. And Chris Carson, 20 carries for 93 yards. I think he was five or six picks away from being Mr. Irrelevant. He was. So it just goes to and, show and you. Yet, I, every time I watched Oklahoma State last year, I never even he, – he never flashed for him. Right. He's all they got at running back. And for whatever reasons, I don't know what's going on with Eddie Lacy. I mean, we saw the story about how he's been dealing with his weight, his weight issues. and um, But you signed up, Eddie, for this. This is what you signed up for. You signed up to be a football player, mm -hmm. and you know you have to manage your weight. So you got to manage your weight, or you need to find another profession mm -hmm. that you can eat whatever you want to eat and be happy with yourself. But I just believe they'll get this running game going. Chris Carson will continue to run um, like he did last week, and the defense will get a couple of turnovers from Mariota. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like I, it's going to be. I, I get 23-16. I'm not overly confident. This is not the the same. This is not the same Seattle team from, uh, say, a couple of years ago mm -hmm. because the offense was playing a, was a, in a lot better rhythm. But Jimmy Graham, I, I need to see the old Jimmy Graham. Mm. I, know he, I know he has that big play potential, and uh, Baldwin would Baldwin show up. Richardson, yeah, 23-16, that's a good number. I like that. Mm. So scale of, doing it? scale of 1 to 10, I got to ask you, how much do you love your Super Bowl pick right now? How much confidence do you have? 1 I'm, to 10. Given what I've seen from the NFC and that everybody has a, a major flaw, especially the top team, I'm probably about a seven. Um, right now, if I had to pick, if I had to pick, I would say <laughs> Atlanta. You don't really no, know. I'll, I'll, say, I'll, I'll say seven. Mm -mm. A lot is going to be predicated on how many games they play at home. Yeah. And no, I'm not putting a case of due on Marcus Mariota. I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> But I do – I still think that Tennessee is going to win this game, and I think that your Super Bowl pick is going to have a hard time resurrecting itself. Well, your Super Bowl pick is going to have a hard time. Hmm? I, I no, got New England winner. No, 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 no. You got your Super Bowl pick. You got them going to the Super Bowl. You no? got – no, I'm talking about the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to have a hard time making it through. Well, well, they're one and one Okay. Is that a disaster? What is Seattle? Huh? I don't know how they're one on one. They got to play San Francisco. I don't know how y'all won. I don't know how y'all not 0 and 2. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, after we dominated and devastated the New York Giants and they still haven't recovered? After that, what Denver put on y'all, that should be two oh. losses. Oh, really? Two losses. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, you get beat 42 to 17 with the best quarterback you know in what? the league, the best running back in the league, you know, the best tight end, you know what? best wide receiver. That game last Sunday at Mile High was Shannon Sharp's Super Bowl. Whoa. That was it. Oh, we got you more should, of those games. You should hang on to it for the rest of no, the year because it's all. Oh, you're gonna have no we got more of them yeah we got more of them if we play you bombs yeah
bombs? Yeah, we yeah. play U bombs. Uh, you, you better hope you make it to the last game of the season on a neutral field. That's why play us bombs. That's why we skip. Mm -hmm. We did you a favor. Mm -hmm. We let you know you're not nearly as good as you, you thought did. you were. Wake up, call. Here we come. You can watch both yep. of these games this Sunday on Fox. No mercy. Yesterday it was revealed that Aaron Hernandez had a severe case of CTE. The testing was done on Hernandez's brain after he committed suicide in April at the age of 27. The CTE center at Boston University found that Hernandez had stage three of the disease, which his lawyer said was the most severe case ever seen for a person of Hernandez's age. His estate has filed a lawsuit against the NFL and the Patriots. Shannon, what does this tell you? Joy, this is tough for me, Skip. This is tough for me because I really have to divide it up in two, into two parts. Over the last few years, what we've learned about this deadly disease, CTE, is that repeated head trauma, not from a single concussion, but because the head collide on numerous plays throughout the course of a game, that a player or an athlete that's a combat sport or football or whatever the case may be, Skip, greatly increases his chance of suffering from this disease. And I don't want to use Aaron Hernandez as the baseline for 27-year-old football players and this disease because you have to have, you, you have mitigating factors with him. We know for a fact that he had a history of drug abuse. He lost his father at a very young age. Yep. So we don't know how much that played a role into this. He played 40, what is it, 44 NFL games. He played 40 college games. He played 28 high school games. Yet the only people that are being sued by his estate is the NFL and the New England Patriots. Not the University of Florida, not the NCAA, not his high school, not the district. The NFL and the New England Patriots. Skip, now we know for a fact that he had issues in college. He had so many issues and red flags, some teams took him completely off their board. Yep. This is why New England was able to get a first-round talent in the third round. So we know those things. See, what, we, what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to rationalize irrational behavior. He played his last game at, what, 23 years of age in the NFL? Took his life at 27? 40 games, that's what he played. That's 44 games, including the playoff skip. That's what he played. For me, and I don't know if they're trying to pass the cup of sympathy and empathy around, but when it comes to him, I have none. I have empathy and I have sympathy for the lives that he ruined. One Odin, Odin Lloyd, mm -hmm. who mom will never, ever get to hurt her son again. He will never, ever be able to give his mom grandchildren. I empathize and I have sympathy for them. The lives that Aaron Hernandez ruined, his family, his daughter. Now, she's going to read what her father did and what type of person that he was. That's who I empathize for. Mm. The CTE, I, I don't look. Should I, should I automatically jump to the conclusion that every 27-year-old that's playing football has the brain of his? I don't know. Like I said, Skip, I don't know if he's the baseline that we want to use given the circumstances that we know about his off-the-field mm -hmm. behavior. I just, it's, for me, there's no longer can an NFL player, I don't know the risk. Maybe I get to say it, Skip, I didn't even know what a concussion was. Got your bell rung, you got mm -hmm. dinged, I saw stars. Yep. Over the last five years, even over the last 10 years, we know more. And I think they're trying to do more. There's a study I was reading that says they're starting to recommend that no one should play football, tackle football, under the age of 12. So basically, I would say within the next five to 10 years, you're going to have to be at least 13 years of age to play tackle football. That's where they're heading. They're trying to make the equipment as safe as they possibly can. The helmets, mm -hmm. they're trying to take contact out of practice, Skip. But you're playing an inherently dangerous game because you're asking large men to run into larger men at a high rate of speed. There's only so many safety mechanisms that you can put in place because that's not what they made the human body for. The human body was not made to run into other human bodies at a high rate of speed. So I get it, CTE, is it. CTE NFL, everything, my t timeline was trending. Breaking news, he had uh, the worst state, CTE, in this, 
But ho, hold on now. Are you not going to mention some of the things that he did off the field? Are you not going to mm-hmm. mention some of the things that probably mitigated and, 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 and led to this diminished state? CT is bad, and I feel I feel bad for the people, some of these young men that played this brutal game and suffer from it. There's a good chance I have it skipped, but I'm not going to try and, and rationally, I'm not going to do something and then try to blame it on that because we see that a lot. What we're seeing mm-hmm. is that people do things mm-hmm. and then they have to have a reason on why they did it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes bad people do bad things. Okay, so to your biggest point, from all I've heard and all I've read and all I know about Aaron Hernandez, he exhibited what I would call criminal tendencies from a very early age. Correct. Junior high school or middle school and high school in Brist- Bristol, Connecticut, where mm-hmm. I worked for many years, and on into S- University of Florida, real criminal activities. Correct. And you're right. A lot of teams said, will not draft, but he wrote, a letter to Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick, which somehow convinced them to take him, and he could play. He was special. He was. So I'm having a hard time connecting the dots here. I just, I'm, I'm going to tell you this again. This is my gut feeling about CTE, and I'm not a scientist, and I haven't done, you know, hundreds of hours of homework about this, but this is my small sample size. I've been doing national TV shows for about 30 years, and over those years, I'm pretty sure I could compile a list of over 100 ex-NFL players I have worked with, and ex-NFL coaches, but, but the players are the key. And a lot of those coaches actually played college right. or pro football. Mm-hmm. Not one do I know, and I'm, I'm close to a whole bunch of them. By the way, I'm close to a number of older time ex-Dallas Cowboys. Not one time have I heard from one of these players, well over 100, that they have any symptoms of CTE. Small sample size, you got it. But I sit across from you every day, and you're, so to speak, sharp. You know, your mind is razor sharp. Okay, so are you slowly losing memory and the ability to focus and concentrate? I, I don't see it, you're 49. I don't know. Will it manifest itself when you're 59 or 69? I don't know. I don't know. But I want to point out that I read a piece on Yahoo.com that was posted, I think, just a couple of days ago by a neuropathologist named Dr. Peter Cummings. And I don't want to get too technical here, but he studies brain trauma for a living. And he has now carefully studied all the data compiled about CTE because he has an 11-year-old son who is begging him to play football. And he said that he had, for the last three years, banned football from his household, can't even watch a game, because he read all the horror stories about CTE, and there's no way he wanted his son, his only son, to even get exposed enough to football to start getting the itch to play. Right. So he did his study, and he makes a big point. I'm not paid by the NFL. I have no affiliation to the NFL. and. Dr. Cummings discovered that the scientific evidence to support the media's anti-football narrative is, to quote him, lacking. In fact, he said he found bodies of evidence to the contrary. He says that quite a few members of the medical and the research communities are also voicing serious doubts about the current state of science linking concussion to CTE. I'm just throwing out the other side of this story to you. And Dr. Cummings concludes, we do not have a complete picture of what causes CTE or how common it is among NFL players just yet. It it might not be concussion, Skip. It's repeated head trauma. Skip, here's the thing. Do I forget things? Yes. But I'm 49. I'm not 29. Do I get upset? Am I moody at times? Yes. As cancers are moody sometimes, Joe. You know, Mm -hmm. crab, we get moody. Okay, I get it. But what, at what part do we grow, at, do we age, and people say, you know what, he's just aging. Do we, are we supposed to have a 70-year-old, supposed to have the mind of a 21-year-old that's healthy? I mean, at some point in time, doesn't something, we don't run as fast. Well, is, is it because I got CTU or is it because I got something, I don't run as fast at 70 as I did at 25? At what point in time is there is attrition? Things happen. I don't have the same, I don't, uh, can I, can I just recall? I got great recall, but I can't recall things as I once could. But I like to think 
it's age. You get older. You don't do things. Things don't come as quickly. But, I mean, we at some point in time, we got to factor in all the mitigating circumstances. People that do, th okay, they play football, okay, and they, and they, they commit suicide, and we automatically, well, it was football related. Okay, what about his relationship? Was he married? Was he divorced? Was he happily married? What is his financial? All those things weigh in, Skip. Yep. But we just want to lump all this because the NFL, we just want to pile all of this on. The, the dude played 44 games. I've played over 300 football games, collision, in my life. So... It's, to me, high school football can be worse than pro football because you have no idea what you're doing and you're already big and strong and fast enough to create yeah, damage. And you hit every day yeah. in high school football. Oh. We hit every day. Yeah. We used to have... We wore... And, and early, like I said, early in the NFL, we had on pads every day. You thud it up twice a day in training camp. You put people on the ground. But as, they, as the NFL and, and, and people have tried to understand more, they've tried to do more to try mm -hmm. to protect they the guys. Have. But moving forward, guys, yep. there's something called assumption of the risk. Mm -hmm. You know I that there's a risk you. are involved Correct. in playing pro football. Are you willing to assume those risks for financial reward? If you are, please, 20 years mm -hmm. from now, don't complain. If you're not, step away. Chris Borland said, you know what, guys, knowing what I know, I don't want to take these risks anymore. Mm. There are several guys that said, you know what, knowing what we know, I'm done with it. But if you're willing to assume the risk for financial reward currently and down the road, you, you can't claim ignorance because you know that there are risks. And it's not, and, and I was reading the study, the guy said it's not one concussion or two, two concussions, it's the repeated head trauma. Even if you don't get a concussion, it's just a banging because unlike rams that have a protective coat, there's no protective coat. Our brain sloshes around when we hit head-to-head. -head. Mm -hmm. Woodpeckers, that's why they don't get dizzy when they... <laughs> but we don't have that mechanism, Skip. We don't? So we, were, we, weren't, made, we weren't made to go head-to-head -head mm. like bighorn rams mm. or woodpeckers. Mm. That's why they can do it over and over. That's why we get knocked out sometimes. You, mm. like, like Connor was on the rope. He yeah. was all dazed. He was woozy. Mm. So, but, Joy, do you have concerns about your... Brother Jason? Uh, I mean, Jason is in good health, but obviously uh, it's, a, it's something that you think about every day. But there's, there's so much medical confusion about it. it. You know, it's, it's a brutal game. We know it. it's a collision sport, and, and you take risks. But I will say I, I uh, would encourage my nephews to play baseball, you know? Yeah, yeah golf. Guarantee contracts, golf, you know? Guarantee tennis, money. You know, go that way. Go that way. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again same time Monday morning, 9.30 Eastern. Have a great weekend, everyone. Fox Sports. One of one.